first they didn't want him. Then he got hot and they were all on him. Houston-born rapper Michael Allen Jones, better known simply as Mike Jones, originally wanted to be an NBA player. As time went on though, it became more and more difficult for him to hone his athletic skills with one team since his family moved so often. Eventually, he dropped out of high school. Mike ended up dabbling in street pharmaceutical sales for a short while, but mainly stuck to working in various menial jobs like fast food restaurants and selling cell phones. He would begin his musical career as a member of a hip hop group called Suffolk, using the name Sachet. They only released one album titled Country Thuggin'. It didn't produce any significant results, so Mike decided to leave the group and pursue a solo career. Around this time, he would form his own independent record label called Ice Age Entertainment, where he promoted and distributed his music. While trying to build some hype around his work, Mike found himself getting discouraged when people wouldn't be interested in what he had to offer, often asking, who? Whenever he introduced himself. His grandmother would end up being a great support for Mike, encouraging him to continue pursuing his dream, ignore the negativity, and suggested that he use his real name so people would know who Mike Jones is. Oh yeah, she also suggested that he forget trying to capture the attention of the male DJs he was peddling his mixtapes to and instead focus on appealing to strippers. Mike heeded her advice, started spending a lot more time in strip clubs, getting to know the dancers, and turned their life stories into popular songs that they would perform to. Independent Southern record label Swisha House founder Michael 5000 Watts and president of A&R T. Ferris would eventually sign Mike to a record deal after noticing how popular his music was becoming in the strip clubs. At the time, the label was also picking up other Houston-based artists like Slim Thug, Paul Wall, and Chameleon Air. Mike released his first mixtape titled Ballin' Underground in 2003. Towards the end of the following year, Mike's breakout single would drop called Still Tippin'. Prior to this though, it was also used as a single to promote Swisha House's compilation album, 2003's The Day Hell Broke Loose 2. The song features vocals from rappers Slim Thug and Paul Wall, and got so much airplay, it caused many major labels to bid for a chance to work with Swisha House. Asylum Records, under the umbrella of Warner Brothers, would win in the end, and decide that the track should serve as Mike's debut single. It peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Rap Songs chart, and eventually go platinum. Now, with backing from a major label, Mike could really promote himself the way he wanted to. A few months later, his second single, called Back Then, dropped. It did even better than Still Tippin', going to number 22 on the Hot 100, number 6 on the Rap Songs chart, and also reaching platinum status. The track also featured what would become a very famous set of numbers that just happened to be Mike's own personal phone number that later he'd claim had been dialed by fans upwards of 40,000 times a day. In April 2005, Mike released his debut album, appropriately titled, Who Is Mike Jones? It quickly achieved platinum status, eventually reaching double platinum, and became his highest selling album to date. Naturally, due to all the success he was experiencing, collaboration offers became plentiful. His best charting feature would be on T-Pain's I'm In Love With A Stripper. Over the next few years, Mike released several more mixtapes, as well as an EP titled The American Dream in 2007. Two years later, his second studio album was released, titled The Voice. Even though three of the five singles, Drop and Gimme 50, Cuddy Buddy, and Next To You, all made it on the rap songs chart, the album overall was no comparison to his debut, selling a mere 200,000 units versus his debut's platinum success. On a more positive note, Mike was sporting a more spelt look on the cover art. At his highest weight, he tipped the scales at more than 300 pounds. He decided to embark on a weight loss journey by eating lighter and hitting the gym harder, shedding 100 pounds. Then Mike went radio silent. In 2012, he finally resurfaced on his YouTube channel and announced his return to the music scene. 
He explained the reason for his hiatus being due to financial disputes with his former label, Asylum Records. To let other people tell it, the real reason for Mike's disappearance was due to his disloyalty and burning bridges with his people in H-Town. Apparently, that sentiment also had roots in his 2004 beef with Chameleon Air, his 2008 physical altercation with Trey the Truth, which left him with a broken nose, and Paul Wall's curt response about where Mike was in a 2010 magazine interview. A couple of years later, he announced he was finally finished with his next album, Where Is Mike Jones, and also had plans to release another mixtape. Mike did release that mixtape titled Money Train in January 2015. That same year, a crazy rumor surfaced about him getting arrested in San Antonio on human trafficking charges. It all started with a report posted by a fake TMZ website. They claimed that Mike forced his victims to work as prostitutes from hotels while he collected the earnings. The website even went as far as posting a fake police report and quoting a non-existent cop. The story gained enough traction and was shared enough on social media that Mike had to reach out to the San Antonio Special Victims Unit to clear his name. A follow-up mixtape, Money Train Reloaded, was given several release dates in 2017 However, it has yet to surface. Mike got quiet again for another several years until 2021, when he announced a new record deal with independent hip-hop label RBC Records. He's also made a point to use his platform to educate other artists on the importance of having a plan and understanding the terms of their contracts so that they'll be able to have financial freedom for many years to come. Mike speaks of what he knows since he's talked at length about his many years long battle to recoup the royalties and publishing he's owed from his former label, as well as hundreds of thousands of dollars in overpayment from the IRS. Mike's long awaited third studio album, now titled Guap Season, was given a tentative release date of May 2022, which has since come and gone. Fans shouldn't sweat it though, since Mike sure doesn't. Over the years, he's always maintained his desire to just create great music, whether it gets released or stays in the vault. He's never been in a rush to please any record label or keep up with current tastes. These days, he stays busy and paid by continuing to tour as well as expanding his brand, Money Train LLC. One recent money move for the company came in the summer of 2022 when Mike partnered with restaurant and sports bar franchise Buffalo Wild Wings to have his 2017 song, Sauce, featured in their commercials.